audio amplifiers have been very popular on my channel. I've tested these for many years in the past, even before I got my amplifier dyno. Check the link in the video description. I'll have a link to all the mini amps I've tested over the years. Today we're going to look at Knob Sound or Doke Audio, who's been around for a little while. They've been around since 2013, and I love their company profile. They say, we design, produce, and sell high-quality products at favorable prices to those who love music and fashion. They have dozens of amplifiers listed on their website, anywhere from $35 US up to $1,400 US, tube amplifiers even. So pretty impressive lineup here. Maybe we'll try one of those more expensive ones later. But for today, we're going to look at the M1 Pro by Doak Audio. And I don't have the upgraded version, which I'm showing here. Mine doesn't have that extra antenna. But at the time of this video, $94 for this mini amp, which is kind of pricey. So let's uh, open the box and see what's inside here. Again, we have this 32 volt 5 amp power supply, which is 160 watts. And again, this thing is rated a little higher than that. Here you can see all the different components included, some paperwork, power supply, and the amplifier. Not a whole lot. On the front of the amp, you'll see the power input selection switch. Go from off to RCA to USB to Bluetooth. USB and Bluetooth controls for previous, next, and pause. USB input for up to 32 gig flash drive. Bass and treble controls for tone adjustment as well as a large volume potentiometer. All the potentiometers feel really nice on this amp, so I really like that. On the back, you can see we have RCA line level inputs. These are the standard style RCA, not Tiffany. Beside that, we have an RCA line level subwoofer output, so you can power a, or send signals to a powered subwoofer. And then we have the speaker outputs, which are on binding post. Very nice, very nice quality there. And we have the power input to use the included 32 volt 5 amp power supply. As far as the size, the amp is very compact. For the width, 4.5 inches or 114 millimeters. For the depth, 6 inches or 152 millimeters. That includes the knobs and the speaker outputs. And for the height, 1.5 inches or 38 millimeters. What makes this amp unique as far as mini amps go is it does have the subwoofer output that's not a standard option on mini amps as well as a USB input for playing MP3, WMA, APE, FLAC, or WAV files. It also has a TDA 7498E chip which the chip itself is rated 160 watts plus 160 watts max power. We know how max power goes. According to ST who designs the chip it says it has that output power 10% THD, 4 ohms at 36 volts. Again, the power supply is 32 volts, 5 amps, so we don't even have we only have 160 watts for the power supply. Here's a comparison to the other FOSI audio that I tested before. Dimensions-wise, it's exactly the same and has some nice potentiometers, as I mentioned before here, for controlling the bass treble as well as the volume. And the other thing is on the back, if you use these dual banana plugs, they will not work with this amp. Uh, I really like these ones from Stinger. Check the link in the video description. I'll have a link to these. As these accept up to 8 gauge wire. And so I went with the single versions of the Stinger here. Again, they accept 8 gauge and these fit perfectly into the amplifier. So now that we have the amp on the bench, let's wire it up using some 12 gauge OFC speaker wire. And uh, we'll get it plugged in here, pull it up to the dyno, and let's try it out. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch. Smash me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. First up, let's try 8 ohms stereo. There are no ratings provided from the manufacturer. Let's try it out on the dyno and see the 1 kilohertz test track here. Both channels are measured. And we got 55 and 52 watts. You can ignore the voltage on the right side. The, we have the dyno plugged into my battery bank, so it's not going to show the actual voltage of the amplifier. It's just showing the voltage that's provided to the amp dyno for powering it. 
Let's try uncertified, which is up to the clipping point, and virtually the same numbers, 54 and 53 watts. So that's decent power for a mini amp going to uh, you know some smaller bookshelf speakers or even some tower speakers. 53 and 52 watts using the dynamic burst test. Again, that's pretty decent power. Uh, four ohms, this is where it's rated 160 plus 160 max. I know what most people are already gonna say. Take max and half it and that gives you your RMS rating. Well, in this case, it turns out to be pretty true. 82 and 85 watts. Again, that's RMS uh, certified to 1% THD. This uncertified test takes us up to the clipping point of the amplifier once it hits that point where no more clean power. 89 and 84 watts, so a little bit more. And then dynamic burst sends a pulse tone into the amp. And it's right about the same, not much difference here. 87 and 84 watts. Now we'll look at those results that we just showed you. It's not 160 by two, obviously. And you can pause this if you want to see it. And I do have some additional tests at the very end of the video after the credits. So if you want to see that, make sure you stick around until the very end. Now let's hook it up to our ELAC speakers and the Polk powered subwoofer and see how it sounds. We'll be using tracks from the YouTube audio library loaded onto a USB drive. As it's playing with the sub, I'm gonna turn it off, see if we get any kind of a thump. Zero, turn off thump. Let's turn it back on. See if it starts back where it was. It does. Remembers exactly where it was, very cool. So I'm not seeing a Bluetooth device listed here when I have the thumb drive plugged in. So let me switch this, pull the, thumb drive out. Let's flip it back to Bluetooth and let's see if we show up, a device shows up here. There it is, Bluetooth Hi-Fi Audio. And Bluetooth Hi-Fi Audio, we're connected. Let's play a song here from Bluetooth. Let's open up the case and find out what's inside this amp. We'd say chips and dip switches and sounds for the... You big dummy! Inside the amp, you'll notice a really large heat sink in the middle to keep that amp chip nice and cool, as well as some output filtering there. And I did notice these Elna caps, which I'm not sure these are true Elna caps, 16 volts, 470 microfarads, because these are high grade caps. These may not be the real ones. Again, some more filtering there for the outputs. The good stuff, this thing has solid construction aluminum, USB RCA Bluetooth for inputs, bass and treble controls, speaker binding post for connecting your speaker wires, a subwoofer output RCA line level for connecting a powered subwoofer, 
and good sound quality overall, especially with that Poke Audio subwoofer connected. Things could be better. It'd be nice if it had a subwoofer volume control. It does not have a remote control. Uh, at almost $100, I would consider this kind of pricey for a mini amp. And I wish they'd just give that RMS rating of 80 watts by 2 at 4 ohms, because that's what this amp truly does. As far as mini amps I've tested, this may be one of my favorite ones due to the RCA line level subwoofer output. The nice sound that it sent to the ELAC speakers. Again, check video description for the link to those ELAC bookshelf speakers and the Polk Audio subwoofer. Those are a great combination. You can pretty much add whatever amp you want and those sound great. So thanks again for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Duke Audio M1 Pro, 2.67 ohms. It's not rated anything under four ohms. So let's just try it certified first, one kilohertz. All right, 81 and 77. Uncertified up to clipping, 2.67 ohms. Eighty-two and seventy-eight dynamic burst, two point six seven one kilohertz. Whoa, one thirteen and one hundred eight. Duke Audio M One Pro not rated anything under four ohms. Let's try two ohms. Just the dynamic burst test, one kilohertz. Hopefully, it won't hurt the amp. Let's we'll just see what we get. All right, in and out of protect there, 135 and 133 watts.